I'm Michelle Davenport with Faith Builders Ministries, and this is your Vertical Hope. Woo! Get ready. I started a five-week series last week, and I was talking about Ephesians 6, which it says, Finally, put on the full armor of God so you can stand against the wiles of the enemy. Let me explain something to you. Finally, in the Greek, means most importantly. And Paul was saying, you know what? More important than the other five chapters I just wrote, now we're coming across something that is most important, more important than the other five. Because if you do not do this, you will never be able to do the five chapters I just spoke about. He says, finally put on the full armor of God. Not half, not a quarter, not three-fourths of an of a armor, but all, but full armor of God. Listen, and I told you last week, you will not accept a 20-hour paycheck if you work 40 hours, would you? No, you would not. So that's half your paycheck. That's half your hours. And God is not talking about putting on half your body, your full, your armor. He's talking about putting on the full armor of God. Why? Well, he tells us right in the next sentence. Because the enemy has wiles and waiting to attack us. Lies in waiting, y'all. Lies. When you get up, he has lies waiting for you. And I talked about the, the five uh, fiery darts. And these are this is the thing, y'all. This is the thing. I discussed doubt, but then today we got delay. And the next week we have defeat. The following week we have distraction. The following week we have discouragement. There's five arrows that the enemy comes with us, and I believe all life circumstances fall underneath these five. Now, you might be able to find more, but this is what I found, and this is what I preached on so many times. And so I want to bring it to you and bring it into the light, and I want to expel the darkness. And, and listen, I just want to bring truth to you. Because I know many of you want it with your whole heart. You want to obey God and you want to go out there and do something for the kingdom in an everyday living life. Whether it be pay for somebody groceries, buy somebody flowers, text somebody, call somebody, serve at your church, start a ministry, feed the hungry, whatever. I know you want to, but I know these five fiery darts can stop you from doing it if you allow it. If you allow it and you have the choice. Choices are for the living. Once you're dead, it's done. You understand? You don't have that choice. But you have a choice. And so I discuss this. And I talk about the, the enemy being written, uh, the, the word e, uh, devil, I'm sorry, <laughs> the word devil being written in the New Testament 40 times. And it comes from the Greek word called, uh, called diabolos. Dia, diabolos. <laughs> I just, I'm butchering that. Forgive me. Diabolos. Dia means, it's a compound word that means through for the idea of penetration. And bolos means to throw as a rock, as you keep throwing it and throwing it and throw it until you get penetration. So this is what I'm doing. Just recapping what we did last week in case you missed it. So what the enemy does is he, he throw his whole name means throwing something against something hard until he gets penetration. And so this is what he does. He throws his lies against our mind until he can penetrate through the truth and get you to believe a lie. Can I get a witness out there today? Can I get anybody on the same page with me? Can I get anybody to say, yes, Michelle, you're talking some truth now. Talk on, preach on, speak it, girl. All right? This is what I want you to know. The enemy has it out for you. And he, he will leave you alone. Honest to goodness, he will leave you alone if you're not doing not one thing for the kingdom of God. Because, you know, I've been attacked in so many different areas. And lately, it's just this, uh, I woke up with just ringing in my ears. I had all the tests, all the things. And no, it, it, you can't explain it. But I know God's healing me. This is what I know. And it seems like every time I just signed a movie option for my book, Ripen on the Vine, which is my true story. Um, it's my testimony. Every single time I try to step out and do something for the kingdom of God that's huge, he comes against me. He doesn't win. But it doesn't keep him from coming against me. He still rises up against me. He still tries to plant lies. Oh, there's no cure for tinnitus. You'll live with this forever. Da, da, da. Oh, in my ear. And I'm like, no, I will not. God is my healer. He is my healer and he will heal me. But I, I tell you, but if you're, you're not doing, and people will say, well, you know, I don't get attacked like that. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe you're not doing anything for the kingdom of God. I don't know. Maybe you are. Maybe it's a season. I don't know that answer, but I do know this. I know that the enemy has lies and waiting. Every single day that we get up in the morning, he is willing and waiting to plant another seed of lies in us, and I don't want it anymore. I'm here to tell you I want it to stop. I want you to get victory over this. And so I talked about doubt last week. 
I talked about, you know, praying for a man that was on his front lawn um, having a heart attack. And I told you the story. If you didn't see that uh, Vertical Hope, go back and see it. It was last week's. But this week I'm going to talk about delay. Delay is the second arrow that the enemy tries to fire at you. Delay. And uh, this, is, this is the God honest truth. I don't care if you believe me or not. God speaks to me. I know I hear him. I hear him in here. And he has proven himself too many times for me not to know that that is him. I know. And the word of God says, my sheep know my voice and they follow. And so I, this is going to just sound outrageous, I know. But I, this is the story. And this is true. One morning I woke up, and this has been years ago. My, my girls are still living at home. And we've always been a one income military family. We chose to have children, me stay home and take a traditional role and raise our children, homeschool and do all the things. And I loved it, okay? So the, I loved being a home, uh, you know, home stay mom. I love, but I also got a couple of degrees while I was staying at home. I went to night school and did this and did that. And so I got my associate's biblical degree and I got a designing degree. So I also loved, you know, learning myself. So God was just, orchestrated all where I could do it, do it all. <laughs> so uh, with his strength, not mine. Amen. Okay. But we've all, like I said, we've always been a one income family. And sometimes I would take a, a part-time job. Like when we first got married, uh, many people do not know I cleaned houses and that was our date night money. So I cleaned houses and me and my friend switched and I watched her kids. She watched mine and that's it. You know, that's who we allowed to watch our kids. And we would go clean houses and we'd make date night money. And then when we moved to California, I worked at REI. I worked there two nights a week to have Christmas money. Uh, but we were at a point where we, I could work or not work or, you know, it, we're at a point where I didn't need to work. But if I did have a little bit of extra money, we could do a little extra things. How many has been there if you're not there right now? <laughs> okay, so one morning I woke up and, and the Lord spoke in my spirit, Michelle, I want you to go online. <laughs> I, listen, I can't make this stuff up. I want you to go online. I want you to uh, print out a Kohl's application. I want you to fill it out. And I want you to take it and apply for a job at Kohl's. It was so specific, y'all, that I could not deny that that was the Lord. So I did exactly what he said. I, got dre I did it all that morning, got dressed. And that day, now listen, we're talking about delay right now, right? The arrow of delay. I did what he said. I didn't wait for a week or two, and I did it that day. And so I did not delay. I went up to Coles and walk, um, walked back to customer service, and I said, can I speak to your manager? Well, the lady said, I'm sorry, uh, she's on vacation. And I said, okay. I said, well, I wanted to give her this application. I put a big old smiley face on it, and I said, uh, that way she'll, you'll remember who I am. I said, give it to her, and you'll know who I am who I am. And, and she said, okay. And so I left and I thought, you know what? I did what God told me to do. I applied. I brought it in the same day. I filled out the ap application. I took it in and I gave it. I even put a big old smiley face on my paper and said, hey, so you don't forget who, who, uh, who this is. And I started to walk down and anybody's been in Coles, they've got a long aisle till you get to the door from customer service. And I got about halfway down that aisle and I heard, hey, hey, Mrs. Davenport, Mrs. Davenport. And it was another manager and his name was Adam. And I said, yeah, and I turned around and said, yeah, and he had my paper with a smiley face on it. <laughs> and he said, hey, he said, uh, yeah, he goes, I was looking over your application. Well, he couldn't have looked very long, you know, because I just walked, you know, I just handed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> must have been the smiley face. No, 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 no. It was God, okay? He said, when can you start? I'm telling you what, I mean, I wasn't even looking for a job, but I, and I, I, it's not even that I was just crazy about going to work at Kohl's, but it made me so happy because I heard the verse, voice of God. I did not delay. I obeyed and I was hired on the spot. I think I started within the next day or two and I worked there for, I think a, over a year, a year and a half, maybe end up getting my goddaughter a job there, my daughter a job there and several other people jobs there. I started working at the jewelry counter y'all and it was crazy. 
There would be people, women, that come to that jewelry counter that didn't want jewelry whatsoever. They didn't care, but they would act like they're looking at jewelry. And then I would start talking to them. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of God would come on me and ask me if I could, and ask them if I could pray for them. I cannot tell you how many women I prayed for at that jewelry counter. Never bought jewelry, but I prayed for them. Amen. Amen. And listen, at Kohl's, you had to get, I don't know, so many credit card invites or something like that. And I never met my quota ever. And my, the main boss then was Sheila. And I just had a connection with her. I'd given her my book, Ripened on the Vine. And, and I just had a connection with her. I didn't get in trouble for doing that. I did pray for a lot of people. She never stopped me. They moved me to the makeup. And then I'm really up and close and personal. And I'm praying for these women. And they're buying makeup, but I'm also praying for them. And so the point of my story is this. God blessed me there, and I was able to be a light at Kohl's, okay? And some of these women's darkest hours uh, at behind a jewelry counter and holding makeup brushes, I was able to be an answer to somebody else's prayer. I was able to shine light in the darkness. So some of these women had horrific stories, and I was able to lay hands and pray for them right there in Kohl's. <laughs> and so that is my point today. Don't delay. Don't let the, the enemy cause you to delay because you have doubts. I could have woke up that morning and said, ah, that wasn't God. Nah, there, I, I don't want a job. I'm not looking for a job. We don't really need a job. You know what? But that money did come in handy and I worked Christmas hours and I'll tell you what, I was a light at Kohl's and I prayed for the employees and I prayed for my manager. I, it was a blessing to be able to work there to be a blessing. And I don't want y'all to miss it because you got fearful and you let doubt, the first arrow come in, which caused you to delay. Amen. They all connect together and you will see this as we move forward in this series. All right. Well, this has been your vertical hope. I pray I sowed a seed of hope in you today and set you on fire. Woo! I got fire shut up in my bones. <laughs> uh, you go out there. You go out there and you be willing to be an answer to somebody else's prayer. Why? Because it will change you. It will change you. All right. And in the process, it will change them. All right. Until we talk again. I bless you. Bye-bye.